seem to have garnered a lot of interest is how we get cables like this. This is HV cable. How we get cables like this and we actually pull them around corners and through trenches and how we actually install them. I mean, everyone knows they're big and heavy and we use a winch, but how do we actually get it in and get it done? So essentially, we set up rollers the whole route of the cable pull and these rollers will obviously guide and direct the cable where we want it to go but also keep it elevated and away from anything that might scratch it, damage it, pierce it, you know, bad stuff you don't want happening. The standard roller is just like this, one roller on a little bit of wood, keep it from sliding around, but you know, with a welder you can make anything happen. She looks like a little bit of a slow process, but what you got to understand is this only takes four people, whereas to pull it in by hand you'd need about 50-60 a lot of hard work and it would not go as smoothly and it would probably take longer. I didn't film any of the winching setup. Basically I was only filming how smooth the rollers were going. I was we're quite happy with the setup. But given the reaction I've got so far, I will definitely film some more and do a better video on this later. What's going on here then? For a long time we didn't know why we had a dog toy floating around in the container. Uh, Eventually, when we broke the drill press handle, we knew damn well why we had it and what we're going to use it for. So, a little bit of thread and rod later, nut and bolt, we've got a perfectly comfortable handle that, if anything, I kind of like better than the original one. Nice, squishy, perfect, you know, something to grab onto. Hey, make sure you dig that trench deep. Oh, I'll dig it deeper, right? You just wait. Fucking overkill. Straight up overkill. Give the grass a rest and come in and have a beer. Come on, mate. Now, if you didn't know where this water come from, you'd think this is a great place to hang out, maybe even throw a rod in the water, but nope. Actually quite refreshing hanging out in a switchyard. You know, change is good as a holiday, they say. So, so as far as switching works in the switchyard, this little drive here spins this thing all the way up here that has these little spots here that will then get contacted by these things here and then when they want to open it this pile of sludge is nickel bubbles and this pile of sludge is lead bubbles the process is essentially same but different if this looks interesting to you in any way, shape, or form, all you gotta do is Google flotation, lead flotation, nickel flotation, flotation of minerals, whatever, something along those lines. Or do what I do, I like to go check out some of the vendor stuff. Metso is a great place to start with this. I'll throw up a little picture and a link and do a video of them that shows the whole process. It's pretty simple really, but it's also cool. So if you're interested, have a look. This is what it looks like when you have a bit of a spill and stuff goes places you don't want it to go. Good luck uh, getting to the safety shower if uh, you don't want to get your feet wet, you know. I'm not sure what they put in this. To make this water turn blue, it's a cool looking blue, a nice looking blue, but I wouldn't drink it. I'm assuming it's some sort of acid bath, it must be to break down the solids a little bit more, to make them more pumpable, to get them down the line, a bit less of a sludge. I honestly don't know, I never got a chance to find out, but it looks real cool. I thought it looked real cool anyway, so if anyone does know, let us know down the bottom. So this is really fun, this is something you wouldn't normally see, this is someone's little homemade installation tester it's not insulation tester but it's an installation tester essentially it's just for like checking a circuit you know you can bell stuff out it's got a little capacitor the smallest little circuitry in there ever it takes a little nine volt battery you can hook test lamps up to it the sort of stuff you make at college you know when you're learning um he's even got himself a little fishing reel to hold all of his uh leads with his banana plugs on them it's really old school stuff you don't really see stuff like this cranking around anymore it's quite fun to see even though it would just be a little bit of a gimmick and someone's probably brought it in to show someone else or whatever because everything has to be certified and you know calibrated and stuff that we use with calibration certificates so 
but it's cool. It's 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 what a house bash would have done back in the day, so it's it's quite fun to see. This guy is nice and colourful, but he'll get ya. He's only a mild on the get ya scale, but he'll, he'll get ya. He will get ya. Alright, so this pipe, it does nothing special, just dumps into this screen of sorts. Now, they've gone for the extra effort of not only just cutting a 45, they've actually welded a 45 on. So, the having the 45 was critical in their mind for some reason for this task. Now, this is just the screen, nothing fancy. Just a bit of fluid will be coming out of here. Just a bit of processed fluids, like, you know. So, some people say it's a bigger surface area, like discharge surface area, because cut on 45, obviously you've got like a lot, lot bigger an oval over the end. Other people reckon it might be um, for sound, for stress, for flow, uh, birds' nests, like, like, you know, there's all, just so no one puts a cap on it by accident. Like, nah, I don't think any of that's the case. This is, has to be for a reason. And if you know, I'd love to know. So if you put it down the bottom, I'd love to find out your ideas because I've noticed this for a little while, this whole 45 on the pipe thing. And uh, if someone can explain it to me once and for all, it's just an engineering habit that they can't let go or what's the case, let us know. I'd love to. It's all about patience when you're fishing for fish this big. A lot of patience. Can't remember the last time I did a motor of this size that was mounted vertically, so that's kind of fun, you know? Terminating something bigger than yourself. So this is what happens when someone puts a mild steel grinding disc in the pile with the stainless steel grinding discs there may not be a difference in the grinding discs themselves but one's impregnated with mild steel and it will give you a hassle later on when some poor bastard has to go along and sand off all the rust because dissimilar metals will rust i don't care what grade stainless you got it's gonna rust Sometimes in life, you just gotta pull a, a bit of a Larry enticer and just go ahead and send it. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. If you think you're having a bad day, you're not having a bad day as this guy. This is definitely going to be a cart in the piss for sure. Definitely going to be a cart in the piss for sure. Drive on! Work. The only place a rainbow like this could be depressing as fuck. It's amazing the corrosion and rust you find in old joints like this. Like, some of it's not even that old, couple years old or whatever, but just the nature of the game. There's so much filings in the air. It's such a high impregnated... You're pulling out all different metals from the ground. It just... Stuff disintegrates. Corrosion sets in. There's full holes and beams here, you know, cross braces holding the joint up. You know, they're not structural, but they're there. After weeks of not having an ice scoop and all the plastic versions of ice scoops that were brought in not lasting a day before they get smashed into ice and turns out ice can be quite hard someone went ahead and whipped up this Stano ice scoop and I gotta be honest I kinda want it more for home than I think work really deserves it's 
it's such a good job. It's just a bit of pipe. They've obviously put a cap on it, grounded it nice and smooth, made a hand out, a little bit of bar. But that's it. What more do you want from life in an ice scoop? It's magnificent. A homemade tool that stands testament to man's will to overcome, adapt, and have icy cold beverages. Ah, oh, look at the baby little mills. These are some of the smallest mills I've ever seen. Ah, oh, I bet you they're still getting bottle fed. Ah, oh, poor little baby mills. Honestly, these mills are tiny. So this is something I've never seen before. They really desperately wanted to put a service loop on this cable and it was huge. So they put in another bit of tray, notched out the sides and just ran it around. A bit of uni strut goes from side to side. And they bolt a bit of uni strut to the bit of uni strut so they can use the Zebedee. Why not just have this facing the other way? There's only clamps on, so it's easily movable. You fucking head. They've done it all the way along here, look. Just waste. Waste of fixings, waste of uni strut, waste of everything. I mean, who uses uni strut anyway? Could use a bit of angle, make it a bit more strong, but fuck it. Alright, we're towards the end of my video here, but I would like to take some time to look out for fixing with Nick here. Obviously, the channel host is named Nick, otherwise I don't know why he's calling his channel that. He's currently only got about four videos and eight subscribers, but I saw him the other day on the Skookum forums over at Reddit there. And he's got this cool plane. He's working on rebuilding this Wombat, well, he calls it the Wombat, uh, this mini excavator build, which is pretty cool. And as I said, it's pretty exciting. Four videos right at the start there. Who knows what he might do with a little bit of support. So if he's got a minute, go check him out, watch one of his videos, and if you like him, Give him a subscribe. And this is going to wrap it up for this entry of the Until It Hurts series. Um, just my random collection of videos from traveling around a bit. If you like these, there's more in the series, more to come. I've also got other style videos if you want to check them out. But until then, thanks for watching. Cheers.